Hey everybody, this is Blake's Take, where I go behind the scenes of some of the world's most interesting and sought after experiences, and I critique them from a customer experience perspective. Today we're talking about Live Aqua, the adults only, all-inclusive resort in Cancun, Mexico. I'm going to be reviewing and critiquing Live Aqua with five different areas of focus that include the property beach and the pools, price and customer service, food, the customer journey, and the overall experience. So just to give you a little bit of background, Live Aqua is one of the larger resorts in Cancun with 371 rooms and suites, nine restaurants, bars, and cafes, seven pools, Live Aqua was built in 2002. Just to give you some context, I traveled there in December of 2022. Number one is the property. Live Aqua has a gorgeous property. And for me, one of the highlights was that so many of the restaurants, you can actually sit oceanside and eat while you look out at the gorgeous water. Most of the days we were there were red flag days, but it was still a gorgeous place to sit in the cabana next to the water. If we're thinking about the property, Live Aqua does have some room for improvement, even though the real estate of the property is incredible. With a few small upgrades, the resort and management could do such a better job. When we got there, we had a terrace room, and while we had a gorgeous terrace, so many of the cords in the room didn't work, so there was actually no place to plug in the iPhone. We only had one plug that worked. So obviously, you think about your customer, people traveling to Cancun from far away, we have to make sure those cords work. For me, this is like a basic thing of the property. No matter how gorgeous your beaches are, you really need to make sure you check all the technology in the rooms and you do a walkthrough before releasing that room to a new customer. The gym there was highlight for me, but again, there was some fitness equipment that didn't work. I found that when I reported that the equipment didn't work to the person standing in the gym, basically told me, you need to go tell management because if I report it, they won't care or fix it. One of the highlights for me in thinking about the property were the cabanas you can rent. And if you get a certain level of room, you actually get a cabana every day with that room and you get a foot massage from an incredible masseuse, which was also a big highlight. In the men's locker room, the jacuzzi wasn't hot enough, the plunge pool wasn't cold enough. For me, I did get a massage at the resort and I felt like the masseuse was a little inexperienced, so they have a little bit of room for improvement there. Number two, we're looking at price and customer service. The resort is not cheap. We purchased the experience with a mix of cash and points, but our whole stay, which was seven nights, would have totaled almost $7,000. It's a lot of money. If you're charging a premium for an experience, you have to make sure customer service is a priority, which for travel, that means making your travelers' lives easier and better, smooth and convenient. And then we saw people waiting in line, which when you travel from far away to go to Cancun, um, you want to check into your room pretty quickly. And I was surprised that they didn't have a paperless check-in program. And I found that some of the information they gave us at the front desk, we didn't really need. And I would encourage them to focus on just getting through, getting customers through the check-in process faster. One of the cool things is you don't need a hotel key card. They're gonna give you a wristband and the wristband color is related to the quality of the room that you purchased. I guess it's good if you buy an expensive room, but if you just have an average room, you might get not as good customer service. For example, if you get the premium room, you will get access to a butler who will reserve restaurant reservations for you. But if you don't have that premium wristband, you can't get reservations at the restaurants on site. And so you might have to wait an hour or more just to sit. They have a gift shop on the property. If you forget something and you need say sunblock, we did notice it costs almost $40 for one small bottle of sunblock. So you're going to want to make sure you bring everything with you. One of the cool things about the Butler experience is that they WhatsApp you. So it's basically just a customer service representative that helps you on site. And through WhatsApp, you can book experiences, excursions, you can ask 
questions. So I'm, I don't know why they call it a butler, but it's basically somebody to help you through your experience. I would say overall with price and customer service, I would say they have room for improvement with such a high-end resort. I would expect more of a customer experience mindset, getting things fixed for customers at a brisker rate. Um, I didn't see a lot of the customer experience mindset where staff were excited to fix problems and do so quickly. I think they have room for improvement there. Number three, food. Most of the food was very good. Uh, we found that the restaurant the first night we were there was not as tasty and most of the restaurants were very good. So I figure if you have a beautiful resort that has mostly delicious food, why even have the restaurant that isn't as good? Just cut it out and focus on the good experiences because for example, this restaurant that wasn't as good, we went to our first night and so that kind of put a bad taste in our mouth and set the bar very low. Everything else was amazing. At some of the restaurants, we liked the food so much, we made friends with the chef and we, we're so in love with, for example, an apple strudel that he made with the cinnamon ice cream, also homemade. That was absolutely incredible at a restaurant you can eat at for lunch called Azure. Highly recommend that apple strudel. Number four, we're looking at the customer journey. Customer journey is exactly how it sounds. What does the customer go through at each step from purchase to transacting to post customer experience. It's the totality of all the touch points and all of those experiences. We at one point upgraded our hotel room. We upgraded to uh, a suite, which was absolutely incredible. The Live Aqua suite, it was like an apartment. When we upgraded our wristband, we also upgraded our access and amenities. So now at that point, we had access to the club, to a private butler, to reservations at the restaurants on the property. Overall, the resort is very beautiful. Property is gorgeous. Restaurants were pretty darn good. Some of them were amazing. Room to grow would be thinking of any inconveniences across the experience, like not being able to make restaurant reservations and people having to wait for reservations or to be seated for an hour, and also just fixing customer issues quickly and effectively. I definitely think there's room for improvement. Overall, Cancun is such a gorgeous place that you could stay at almost any hotel and you would still have an amazing experience, but with a little bit of an improvement to the customer experience mindset, I think Live Aqua could do even better. This is Blake's Take. Thanks for tuning in.